Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be assessing these three Galaxy S8 phones I purchased for a total of $52. Advertised as cannot be repaired with faulty motherboards and screens. All have non-cracked displays with two having cracked backs. I took the gamble and won this auction. With the high cost of replacement screens for Samsungs, I am hoping we can salvage some working displays or even a whole phone. Now, I believe the seller has listed these as faulty and cannot be repaired as to not get any PayPal cases opened against him for any of these devices not being able to be repaired. This is commonly seen online. However, there is obviously the chance that he has tested these and found them to be completely junk phones. I am hoping that I can salvage something out of here and at least make this $52 part lot actually worth it. Because Samsung replacement screens are so expensive, even one working display panel will make this whole lot worth it. Pulling the three phones out, we can take a closer look at all of the devices we got in this lot. We have one gold Galaxy S8 and two black Galaxy S8 phones. The gold one was the first to be plugged in and surprise, surprise, it powered up and began charging. I held the power button down and you guessed it, it actually continued to boot up showing the Galaxy S8 splash screen. Letting the device boot up further, we got to the lock screen where it contained no password or no Google account. This phone had been reset and looked like it was ready to go. Going into settings and about, we can see that this is an international version of the Galaxy S8. Also in settings was a message of significant battery drain and at a closer inspection, this is where it becomes a little bit more interesting. It appears a lot of apps keep crashing. Now, is this a software related issue? Well, I don't think so because this phone also randomly reboots at any given point. But nevertheless, the display on this phone needs to be tested so we can actually verify if it's worth keeping and saving for another phone. And with a specific dialer code, we can test out the touch sensitivity on this display panel. As you can see, it doesn't work in the top left corner. So while this display kind of works, it isn't fully functional. So we're going to test out the next Galaxy S8 and plugging it in and pressing the power button, we get absolutely nothing. Coming across to the last Galaxy S8, we also get absolutely nothing. So we're gonna to need to open these phones to diagnose the issue further. The first one I'm going to open is the most cracked of the two black ones. And I'm going to use a suction cup just to sort of lift up that back panel and slowly heat around the edges. And then I can use a plastic pick to remove the back panel. This came up quite easily as these have definitely been opened before and these back panels on all three phones are not original as they don't have any of the IMEI or serial number printed onto them. Being careful of the fingerprint reader, I'll need to disconnect that before I can remove the back panel entirely. Next, I'm going to remove whatever screws are still left in this phone so I can take the battery out and take a look at that. You can see it's a bit warped and has definitely been uh, removed with quite a bit of force in the past. So I'm going to grab a new battery which I'm going to be using as a test battery throughout this video. Plugging in this Galaxy S8 again and we still get absolutely nothing. So that is not a good sign for this S8. Coming across to the other black Samsung, we're going to take its back panel off and do the same process. Hopefully we'll get a better result with this one and see some kind of life come out of this. While also not turning on, this Galaxy S8 is also having an issue with its SIM card tray. As you can see, it's not pressed in all the way and that's because it's actually jammed at that point and can't go in any further. This back panel came up just as easily and the fingerprint reader wasn't even plugged in. I'm now going to remove all of the screws for the wireless charging coil and remove that from the phone. This time I'm going to remove the battery and also continue deeper into the phone. As I noticed that the speaker enclosure appeared to be sort of bulging out at the bottom. So I wanna take a closer look at that. So there's a few more screws I'll need to remove so I can get that out of the phone. Now I've noticed some more dodgy repairs and you can see here that the antennas aren't even connected to the phone, which is never a good sign whether this is just a dodgy repair or someone trying to make a phone full of broken parts, I don't know yet. 
Taking out the motherboard, I can take a close look at it. It looks okay and it doesn't show any signs of corrosion anywhere on the board. To fix this SIM card tray, I'm going to need to install a new pin uh, that actually helps eject the SIM tray when you press down on the SIM card eject tool. You can see it's kind of all mangled all at the end where it goes inside the phone and this is getting caught and is somehow blocking the SIM card tray from going all the way in. With the new one installed, I can reassemble the phone, this time actually connecting up the antennas for the cellular connectivity, and then I can connect up all the rest of the connections for the display and various cameras and cables. With the battery installed, pressing and holding the power button, finally we got some life out of this Galaxy S8 and it continued to boot up to the lock screen. Now, plugging in the cable, I noticed the only issue I can find with this phone is it's not charging. So I'm going to need to take a look at that later on, but I'm going to come across back to the dead Galaxy S8 so we can harvest out the dock connector from this and hopefully revive the one that isn't charging. And of course, I'll also need to test out this display to see whether or not this is a working panel. We can tell there's something wrong with this motherboard when the text NO is written somewhere on it. Removing the old motherboard, we can install our one that isn't charging and we can test out the display as well as the dock connector at the same time to see if it will charge. So having swapped the two black S8 motherboards, we're now going to be able to test out this display. It appears the phone is turning on, the home button is functioning, but the display is remaining black. So this panel is completely dead. So while the motherboard and screen for this phone don't function, some parts that can be salvaged include the dock connector and wireless charging coil, as well as the camera and earpiece. Now as our functional S8 isn't charging, I'm going to take out the charging port from the dead phone and put it into the one that actually powers on. Hopefully this will resolve our charging issues and we'll have a working S8. Plugging in the charger, you can see that nothing came up on the screen and after powering it on, it still isn't charging. Putting that aside, we can take a look at the last phone in the lot. This is a gold Galaxy S8. You can see the back panel hasn't been adhered properly and the fingerprint reader is loose inside its mounting hole. I'm going to remove the back panel just to show you guys inside the phone. Given this phone has random reboots and apps constantly crash, I believe the issue is either relating to the NAND or the RAM in the CPU. So while the motherboard still turns on, it can't be used as a proper device. Opening the phone up, I found no water damage throughout the device. However, there are some odd or missing screws throughout. There are plenty of things I could salvage off of this phone, including its frame, which still has the factory plastic installed. Off camera, I swapped the two working motherboards, so the one that crashes is now in the black frame, and the one with the charging issue is now gold. I did this as I believed at first, the one with constant crashes was just a software issue which I could fix, so I put it with the good working screen. However, even after updating the software, the phone still constantly crashes and reboots. So you're probably wondering what are the outcomes of these three phones? Well, starting from the right, this one has constant crashes and random reboots, which seem to be NAND or RAM related. The middle one here seems to have a charging issue. It will not charge using the USB-C connection. However, it will charge via the wireless charging coil. This also seems to be a board related issue. We also got one fully functional display, both with the OLED panel and touch. And we got one mostly working display panel, which is on the gold frame and it has a slight touch issue, which probably makes it more of a test display rather than something you'd put on a daily phone. So you're probably wondering, was this $50 tech lot worth it? Well, with the price of a new Samsung screen ranging between $150 to $200 with a frame, and I've purchased this tech lot for $50 and received one fully functional display along with a mostly functional second display and a motherboard I think with a little bit of board repair I can fix and get that charging issue repaired. This tech lot in my opinion was totally worth that money. But the other two motherboards look to be unrepairable. 
And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Tech Lot playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.